y'all sound a little, I know it's raining on the outside, but it, I don't see not one drop in here. Man. So let's try this again. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How many know that God is good? Oh, yes, he is. And he's good all the time. Yes, yes. And he's worthy. Oh, yes, Worthy he is. to be praised. Yes. We're going to try a little something. Y'all join in. Sing along with us. And we're just going to let the spirit lead us. Great is God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Come on, praise team. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It's both of us up here this morning. Praise God. And we ought to praise Him. Praise Him. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. You know, back in the old days, they used to say, together and help us with this. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody 
do me like the Lord said, can't nobody do me like Jesus, he's my friend. Can't nobody, can't nobody do me like Jesus, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Oh, 
Lord. Come on, sing it with us. Say it. I really love the Lord. Even in your darkest hours. Well, praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and heavenly father, we come before you again, God. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your many blessings. We ask, Father God, that you allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in this place today. Let it touch past as he bring the word, Lord. Let it go forth and touch all that are here. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We'll have our opening selection, then the announcements by the clerk, a Black history reading by Trustee Garrett, scripture and prayer by yours truly, two selections, the preached word, invitation to discipleship, and then the benediction. Would you all please stand for the opening selection?
Before I take my seat, I would like to welcome everyone in the sanctuary, those who are on Zoom, the Zoom call line, and the prayer line. Thank you and be blessed. Again, good morning to everyone. As Sister Dignes Garrett said, to those in the sanctuary on the prayer line, we welcome you all, one and all, and on Zoom. Good morning to our pastor, Pastor Tolliver, First Lady Reverend Dr. Eugenia Tolliver, Minister Price, I mean, Minister Pace and Reverend Price. We say good morning to you and good morning to the household of faith. We are still in a divine recess. Amen. We thank you for joining in with us each Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And you can catch us again on your YouTube and Facebook. Don't forget on Wednesday's morning glory prayer, morning glory prayer, Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. And this will be on our prayer line. Bible study. Bible study is Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. We're on a wonderful topic called being an overcomer. And um, we ask that you join in with us on Zoom and Zoom conference line for that. We're continually praying for our sick and shut-in members. Uh, our list is still long. Um, we haven't heard from Ms. Mary Watson. Is she doing better uh, this week? Did anyone hear from her? Uh, she was sick last week. Uh, and we say um, God's healing hand upon her. And I'm praying for all those on our prayer line. Our sympathy goes out this morning to... Reverend Dr. Tolliver on the sudden despise of her cousin uh, on the other day. And so we pray much for her and her family. Health information, we do have the COVID test kits available in the fellowship hall. Please pick up one if you need one. Please sign up for the Revive training on this coming Saturday uh, at 10 o'clock until 11 o'clock. And you will be taught how to reverse an open overdose. So please uh, come out if you can for that session. Hopefully you're picking up your book for Lent, Dynamite Prayer. Join us on next Sunday after service for a kickoff for a Lent reading, Dynamite Prayer. We're in our Black History Month and uh, we trust that you are doing some things that promote our Black history. Uh, this morning, we'll be listening to um, some information from Trustee Garrett. Don't forget on fourth Sunday to wear your African-American attire. If you have something to wear, please wear that on fourth Sunday. February is also Heart Health Awareness Month, Heart Health for Women, our causes, heart disease, uh, our causes of heart disease are high blood pressure, high cholesterol, smoking, diabetes, obesity, and little to no exercise. Please get yourself some exercise. One person dies every 36 seconds in the U.S. from cardiovascular disease. Young people, please submit to Reverend Dr. Tolliver, by your accomplishments for second marketing period and first semester by fourth Sunday, and we will be giving certificates on the first Sunday in March. We'd like to say congratulations to Brother Johan Ellis, who was on the Louisa Middle School Boys basketball team 
and they won the district championship for 2023 with a record season of 15 wins and only one loss. So that was really, really great. Where's Johan? I don't see. He was, oh, he's back there. Oh, okay. Congratulations, Johan. Got to see him play at least one game and he was on fire. Yes. On fourth Sunday, Melissa Bruce will be in the fellowship hall after service to give us some information about fellowship of Christian athletes. She is currently the area director of the Piedmont region and working with students at UVA as well. So meet her in the fellowship hall um, for information on ways that we can help with this organization. Happy birthday, happy birthday to brother Ronnie McGee who will celebrate his birthday on Valentine's Day, February 14th. To brother Gilbert Price who will celebrate his birthday on February 17th. To brother Melvin Timberlake on February the 18th and Dignus Ann Quarles on February the 18th. And happy anniversary to Digan Lord and Dignus Ann Quarles on February the 16th. They will celebrate 38 wonderful years of marriage. So congratulations to them. And have yourself a blessed week and a safe week. And we pray that we'll see you back next week, as Matilda used to say at the filling station. Amen. Brother Gary. Morning, everyone. Get these glasses on there. <laughs> well, y'all know what they mean. This morning, church, I will take about a minute and I will speak on Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who's the founder of Black History Month, and I want to speak on education and what it means to us as African Americans. Carter G. Woodson was born a slave in 1850 in my hometown of Buckingham County. As a slave, it was against the law to teach him how to read and write. After the Civil War ended in 1865, there was no place in Buckingham for him to get any education. He moved from the county at age 16 and went on to other states to allow him to attend school. He went to finish high school and college and became a professor. He went to educate colored people, and that's the name church was used for during that time, so they could have an opportunity to be successful in life. It wasn't until after his death in 1925 that any form of education was made available to colored people in Beckenham. It was called training school. It was a run one, there was a one room building with no indoor plumbing or electricity. Because there were any school buses or any form of public transportation, the training school education wasn't available to everyone. The training school did not have a cafeteria and there was only one teacher who taught everyone. The 10th grade education was the highest you could see at that time. In 1954, a high school was built as the Supreme Court ruled that education had to be equal but segregated. The new school was named in honor of Carter G. Wilson, which I attended his high school and graduated in 1969. Education was important in our household because neither one of my parents finished school. My first seven years of school was at the training school building, which was converted into classrooms. By that time, electricity was installed. Unlike my parents, I was able to complete high school and at 17, I obtained a job with CMP Telephone, now known as Verizon. After 48 years of working in the telephone industry in various capacities, I was able to retire in 2017. Carter G. Wilson understands the importance and necessity of an education to enable us as African Americans to be successful and continue to move forward. And to him, church, all on is due for us as educators and it's Black History Month. Thank you.
Today's scripture will be coming from the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses, verses six and seven. That's Philippians four, six and seven. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and supplicate and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You may be seated. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and everlasting Father, we come to you in humble submission. We come, Lord, with thanksgiving on our hearts. We thank you, God, for all of your blessings. We thank you, God, that you've allowed us to assemble ourselves here today. We thank you, God, for your grace, your mercy, and your faithfulness. We thank you, God, for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. We thank you, God, for forgiving us of our sins because we have not dotted every I or crossed every T. We thank you, God, for being God all by yourself. We ask, Father God, that you bless those who are in the sanctuary, those who are on the prayer line and Zoom, Father. We ask, Father God, that you bless those who are sick wherever they may be. Bless those people, Father God, who suffered during that earthquake. Thank you, God, for still allowing people to be rescued, Father, even though it's been almost a week since it happened. We thank you for the miracles, Lord, that you are performing every day. We thank you, Father God, for Pastor and Dr. Tolliver, Lord. Please be with them as they go forward on this journey. We ask, Father God, that you bless this offering and may it be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen.
like the dew in the morning gently rest upon my like the dew in the morning gently rest upon my Pray for me. Don't you all pray? Still away. Still away. Come on, girl, you can sing it. Still away to Jesus. Still away. Still away. I ain't got long to stay here. My Lord, he calls me, he calls me by the thunder, the trumpet sound within my soul. I ain't got long to stay here. Still away, still away, still away to Jesus. Still away, still away. I ain't got long to stay here. You know
know, I may have heard them say, they're not going to stay down there and steal away all the time. They may want to say, oh, we shall fall. They had some faith. One day they said, you know what? They saw the change come. And they said one other thing. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. They had overcome. I 
rose this morning I didn't have no doubt That the Lord would turn me out I got down on my knees And said, Lord, help me please I got up singing and shouting Victory Victory in mine Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. And the people of God said, Amen. And the people of God said, Amen. Victory is mine. This day, says the Lord, this is the day that I have made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad. And when two or three gather the name, I'm still in the midst, because victory is mine. What a mighty God that we serve. It just feels good, my brothers and sisters, to be in the land of the living. Amen. Give God some praise. There's so much uncertainty out here. Amen. So much uncertainty. Death don't have no age. Death don't have no color. But the Bible says it's pointed to man to die, then the judgment. And the question would be this morning, are you ready? Are you ready? My Lord, my Lord, not going to hold you on very long today. We're going to look at better days. Shall we stand? I'm too glad to be sad. I'm too cheery to be weary. I'm too serene to be mean. I'm too grateful to be hateful. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm too rich to be poor. I'm too happy to be snappy. I feel good, real good in every way, each and every day. I'm better today than I was yesterday. I'll be better tomorrow than I am today. Give God a hand, clap of praise. You know, better days as blessed us as you remain standing. We're going into the word of God. We had spoke that word for going on three years now, I believe, well, four or five years. Better days has healed this church family. Amen. The Bible says you believe in your heart and you confess some things as they are. Amen. I'm not going to hold you all very long today, but I'm going to solicit your attention to a very familiar passage of scripture. Come out the book of Lamentation. Lamentation. Somebody said, Pastor, where is that at? Well, I'm going to help you out this morning. Go to the front of your Bible, the index. Amen. <laughs> And look all the way down. I'll spell it out for you. L-A-M-E-N-T-A-T-I-O-N-S. Lamentations. Amen. Chapter 3, verses 22 and verse 23. Somebody said song. We're not in songs, but lamentations. <laughs> lamentations. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. The Bible says, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercy is upon a fresh each morning. Gracious and wise God, oh God, you are our strength. You've been faithful. We know God, your steadfast love has brought us here today. So God, we invoke the presence of your Holy Spirit into this place. Be with us, touch our minds and our hearts, heal our bodies, heal our infirmities. Do what you need to do so you can get glory in this service today. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I like to title this message today. God has not failed us. God has not failed us. My brothers and sisters, we find ourselves in this unique position, the beginning of another year. God has been faithful to us. The roads may have been rough. The hills might have been hard to climb. The battles you face in 2022 may have been tough, but through it all, the Lord has been good. 
His mercies has been awesome. And I believe some folk here today, this morning, could testify that the Lord has been good. Give God some praise. And he all right. If you and I were to look back just for a moment, we all be able to say, the Lord has not failed us. Despite the past and present ups and downs, good days and bad days, God has delivered us from them all. But the question this morning, what has God promised us? God, my brothers and sisters, never promised that there will be no mountains to climb. But he has promised strength for the mountains. God has never promised that we would not walk through the valley of shadow death, but he has promised that he will walk with us. God has never promised to protect us from sickness or trouble, but he has promised us that he will deliver us from every situation. I will give God some praise in this house because he's a good God. Jeremiah, in this short book of Lamentations, in a dare situation. Jerusalem, my brothers and sisters, had fallen to Babylon, and it was a time of deep suffering. I believe there are some folk here this morning in their situation that seem hopeless. My God, my God. But I want to encourage you this morning that God promises us that it's still true and will remain true and faithful if we're faithful to him. But we must continue to give God from the rising of the sun to going down to sing some praise. We must praise him because he's the all-knowing God. He's the almighty God, and he's the all-present God. Praise him that you are an overcomer. Aren't you an overcomer today? Tell somebody that I'm an overcomer. And in our text this morning in verse 22, the Bible says his mercies never cease. What are you saying, pastor? I'm saying, in other words, his mercy never comes to an end. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If I got to praise him all by myself. Mercy is an extension and of expression of love, an act of kindness, compassion, or favor. It is by the Lord's mercies that we are in our right mind. I need to say that again. It's by the Lord's mercies. It's by the Lord's mercies that we are in our right mind. Oh, I will give God some praise here this morning. Yes. The devil has come to try to trick us. He don't realize that we have not dotted all the I's. He don't realize that we have not crossed all the T's. And one thing that he don't realize that God is a merciful God. He look beyond our faults and he see our needs. It is with the Lord and mercies that we're more than conquerors in Jesus Christ. Why is this? Well, the text tells us every morning, the Lord allows the new ability. He allows to be victorious. He gives us new mercies every morning. God has not failed us. I don't know about you, but when I decided to trust in the Lord and lean out on my own understanding and acknowledge him, I know he's directing my path. I'm not going to worry about the trials and tribulations because the Bible says, cast all your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. Caroline, have you ever felt like there would be no tomorrow? If there's anything that the pandemic taught us, tomorrow is not promised. Tell somebody tomorrow is not promised. And mean it, tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. Every time you go down the road, like get a phone call, somebody's gone from home has expired. Amen. Tomorrow is not promised, my brothers and sisters. My Lord, my Lord. Proverbs 27 says, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest what a day may bring forth. You can be living one minute, and the next minute life can snatch you from here. God gives us mercy, but don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted. God is the merciful God. Don't play with God. What are you saying, Pastor? God is not mocked. You can play with your mother. You can play with your brother, your sister, girlfriend, boyfriend. But don't play with God. God said hi, and he looked low. It matters not how rough the way is. It matters not how strong the wind. God has not failed us. In verse 23, the Bible said, great is his faithfulness. 
The Bible reminds us that faithfulness is to be faithful, reliable, steadfast, and unwavering. God's faithfulness has provided for us to prosper and be in good health. Realizing, my brothers and sisters, that we're totally dependent upon God. When in sorrow, God is faithful. When you're lonely, God is faithful. When you need peace, God is faithful. When you worry, God is faithful. When folk fail you, God is faithful. I believe if I remain faithful to God, he will show me his faithfulness. He will quench the flames of the fire of dust that come to destroy me. He will conquer the enemy when he comes to defeat me. He will unlock doors that are designed to hold me down. But despite it all, Israel was going through some things. Israel was in exile condition. The prophet Jeremiah describes the faithfulness of God despite difficult times. Tell somebody that it might be difficult, but still give God some praise. Every morning, his mercy and evidence was new of God's goodness, indicating that God had not abandoned them nor forsaken them. The Bible tells us in Psalms 89 and 1, the Bible says that mouth will I make known faithfulness to all generations. Psalms 89 and 8 assures us God's faithfulness is all around us. Who would like to see God's faithfulness this morning? I like to see God's faithfulness because I know God is faithful. When the prophet, my brothers and sisters, the prophet Elijah was faced with wickedness of King Ahab, hid in a cave, sat on the Jupiter tree, and lay by the side of the brook being fed by ravens, God was showing him his faithfulness. When the four-star general Naaman was stricken with leprosy, it seemed though his life was all over, had you been there before, God stepped in and gave him some instructions that sound foolish to him. But when he washed seven times, I need to say that again, when he washed seven times, when he washed seven times in the muddy Jordan, he rose out of the water a brand new man. Have you been faithful to God? Have you been faithful to God so God can show up in your life? So God can show up in your life and show you his faithfulness. He is more dependable than United Postal Service. He's more dependable than FedEx and Amazon. He's somebody's own time God. Yes, he is. Oh, I feel like preaching. God is in control. He's the beginning and the end. He is our provider. He is our healer. God has been faithful because he was wounded for our transgression, bruised by our iniquities, chastised the peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. I know somebody said that he was nailed and pierced in his hands and his feet. He was spit on and stabbed in his side, died on the cross and went to the grave, rose on the third day of all power in his hand. Give all you got to God because he never failed us yet. For the mighty God we serve. Don't play with God, my brothers and sisters. Don't take God's mercy for granted. Don't take God's favor for granted. The Bible says, oh, no man anything but to love one another. God is coming back for his church. He's coming back for his church. He's coming back for his church without a spot or blemish. I don't know about you, but I'm going to continue to praise God because I didn't deserve to be here today, but he brought me here anyway. You didn't deserve to be here today, but he brought you here anyway. God is looking at faithful people today. Some people are so faithful today that they're already prepared for the Super Bowl. But I know somebody who's in charge of the Super Bowl. I know somebody who's in charge of everything. If I put God first, the Bible says all things will be added unto you. I don't know but you, but I thank God for being faithful today unto me. Because he's a faithful God and his mercy is endure forever. Give God some praise. Yes.